Hey, what's going on? You know who it is. You know what it is. All right, you guys. Peak game. All right, man. Enjoying my day off. You know, about to get up, run a couple of errands. You know, um, you know, just run a couple of errands. You know, still, um, you know, California on uh, suspension. You know, Gavin Newsom said basically. I'm just giving y'all an update. Gavin Newsom say he's putting a plan in place. Uh, basically, for us Californians, I told you, California you know, are always the last to do anything. So more than likely we'll open up probably within the next two weeks. So probably California will be back up and running, hopefully around the 15th of May, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, Gavin Newsom wants to play it safe. At the end of the day, if Gavin Newsom has the best plan or the best overall results, I know Gavin Newsom telling people, that he doesn't plan on running for president, but trust me, it's in the cards. <laughs> so he will eventually run for president, so don't believe it. But anyway, despite that, let's, let's talk about um, the Michael Jordan, Isaiah Thomas dynamic. You know, at first I thought that the Michael Jordan, Isaiah Thomas thing was just a little overblown and maybe it was just media creation but based off michael michael jordan's you know demeanor towards isaiah thomas and then i looked up some old footage of the detroit pistons and you know the chicago bulls and and, and please i want to say this to my detroit subs and to my chicago subs please don't get me caught up in no old school turf war you know what I'm saying? Please, I'm just, I'm trying to be as objective as possible. You know, so please, I ask Detroit and Chicago, please don't start gang war and please, you know, on my channel because I, I didn't seen a couple of comments. It's, it happened a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? Just let it go. I'm seeing that on a few outlets where old beef and old tensions start to start up between the D in Chicago, so, you know, just chill, stand down, you know, I fuck with Detroit, a lot of my subs are from Detroit, and I got a vast, you know, vast majority of uh, subs from, from the shy town, my my boy Stevie J, been a long time contributor to my channel, he's been here for a while, he's a long time commentator, so Stevie, you know, be cool, you know, Matthew, be cool, you know what I'm saying? I'm, and Rob, be cool, man. Be, you know, for real. Relax, Detroit. Relax, Shy town You know, for real. Let's, you know, let's not get into a, you know, let's not, not let's not get into no funk. <laughs> so, <laughs> with, 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 with that being said, with that being said, you know, um, when you look at this stuff, like I said, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. You know, this is going to win some kind of, I, I'm not going to lie to you, this is going to win some kind of Emmy, whatever. It, it's going to win some kind of Emmy. The funny thing about it, they could have packaged this for real. They could have edited this and they could have made this possibly like a three-hour movie and put this in the theaters and this would have contend for an Oscar. I'm serious. It's that, that well put together. And I guess a lot of people are shocked due to the fact that Michael Jordan was dropping F-bombs and all. Well, he is a human being. I don't know why people act like I heard people say, I'm surprised. I was, uh, Michael Jordan was. Uh, why? What made you think Michael Jordan didn't cuss? So I'm not going to lie. I do appreciate this rawer version of Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Where he's not being so corporate. I do appreciate that where he's not being so corporate. This seemed like the Michael Jordan I could relate to and talk to. not the, But you know, Michael Jordan is, you know, Michael Jordan is a billionaire now. You know, you know, he's he feel like he's sitting on two billion dollars. Michael Jordan is fifty seven, ladies and gentlemen. What is he? Fifty seven, fifty eight. So, I guess he had a place now where he feel like he can say certain things now. Cause I guarantee he wouldn't have talked like that about fifteen years ago. But you know, it is what it is. I accept it. But 
his his hatred for Isaiah Thomas or contempt, I don't want to say hatred, but his contempt for, for Isaiah Thomas is real. I could tell when somebody is sort of like acting and it's not as bad as people make it out to be. I, it's not like how Shaq and Charles Barkley is. Now, believe me not, I do think that there is a genuine dislike between Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley. I think it's one of them Sometimes they like each other, sometimes they don't. But I think more times than than others, I think they don't like each other. But Michael Jordan and Isaiah Thomas, the it's I think it's I think the contempt and the the the, the venom that these two guys have for each other. I think if you lock them in a room together, something could happen. I remember looking at old footage of Michael Jordan practicing for his uh, very last and final All-Star game. Even when Isaiah Thomas was talking to him, Michael Jordan sort of like was disregarding what he said. Like, man, fuck this dude. Now, is Michael Jordan being a crybaby as Bill Lambeer would say? Uh, no. Because I'm going to be honest with you. The way Dennis Rodman and them was fouling Scottie Pippen. And I'm going to tell you something. This is just real talk. This is a little bit off subject. I know P Charles Oakley supposed to be this tough guy and all that type, type of shit. But I can tell you if I'm Scottie Pippen, if Scottie Pippen is me, uh, Oakley would have never grabbed me by my shirt and, 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 and gave me a little fake slap because I would have took off on him because that's just my demeanor. And y'all can sit up there and say, Charles Oakley, well, so am I. So am I. I'm straight from East Oakland, California. He never would have did that to me and not been no consequences. Nobody would have put their hands on me and grabbed me. And I don't care about that rookie stuff because I'm surprised nobody has, has talked about this. But I guess I'll be the one to bring that up. I'm sure somebody going to listen to this video and they're going to talk about it eventually. But yeah, Charles Oakley, he would have never did that to me. He never would have, uh, on my mama, he would have never grabbed me by my shirt and slapped me. Because I'm telling you, rookie or not, you know, I would have took off on him. Straight up. I know you got to respect the OG, but ain't no OG disrespecting me like that straight up. That's some real, that's some real shit. You know what I'm saying? On my mama, he wouldn't have, on my mama, he wouldn't have grabbed me by my shirt. <laughs> uh, don't play with me like that. For real, don't I don't even I don't play them kind of games. Don't don't touch me. That's just real talk. But anyway, let's get back to the Michael Jordan Isaiah Thomas situation. Um, yeah, as I was saying, I think if they really got locked in a room together, they they they, they might come to blows. Cause it's it, it seems to be that bad. Now, like I said, I remember seeing all this stuff and and. I'm going to be honest with you. The Detroit Pistons, they antics was a little too much for me. And it got to the point to where it spilled over, you know, uh, you know, Utah Jazz would try to do that shit. Sometimes Carl Malone was known for trying to, you know, elbow people and John Stockton every once in a while. So, you know, and, you know, it just, I just didn't like that kind of basketball because you know those dudes land wrong you know those dudes land wrong uh they could seriously hurt somebody and the league to me they should have put a, a halt to that look i understand it fouling somebody hard but when you somebody up in the air and you clipping them in the air and you know taking their legs from underneath them what if they land flat on their chin what if they land wrong and they, you know, you know, get some kind of neck injury and they can't play anymore or worse? And, you know, so I had a problem with that. I, you know, and I'm saying I respected them as a team, but some of them, some of them fouls they was giving people, they was just, that was just ridiculous. And the league let that go on for years. But at the end of the day, Isaiah Thomas got what was coming to him when when basically Carl Malone basically split his head open 
And then Carl Malone went on to do that until uh, Kenyon Martin knocked him into the third row. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but what I'm saying is what I've learned so far, like this, this situation between Isaiah Thomas and Michael Jordan is 100% real. This is not, you know what I'm saying? I know Michael Jordan you know, acted in Space Jam, but he wasn't acting. When they showed that footage of what he said, talked about that, you know, the walk-off look at the end of the day, to me, I have mixed feelings about it. But I think Isaiah Thomas should have just went over there and just said, at least good game. You know, you can sit up there and say, well, the Celtics did it and all that type of shit. Well, look who played on the Celtics. Look who was the head honcho of the Celtics. Larry Bird and the other head honcho was Kevin McHale. And you know where I'm going with this. You already know it's a different set of rules for them versus us. So at the end of the day, it was just a bad look. I understand where mj is coming from and i'm not capable for mj it just it would have just been better if they would have uh just walked up to him and it was seven seconds left you know what i'm saying it was uh just a bad look in general but i'm gonna get to part two of the walk-off something that people need to talk about but now, I'm going to be the one to talk about it. Because you know, Town Biz specializes in this. This is your boy, Town Biz. I'm out.